In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for the greatness of your humility, that you would humble yourself before us, Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament. Jesus, you are the God of mercy. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. We beg you these things, Jesus, in your most holy name. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, gentlemen, let's come into the presence of God and notice the very first thing Jesus Christ, turn on this thing here, the very first thing Jesus Christ ever taught us was repent and believe in the good news. Repent means you got to change your life. And that means that we come before God and we tell him that we're sorry for our sins. And more than that, we're just sorry, but that we're going to change. Remember, when you say the act of contrition, you say, oh, my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because of your just punishment. But most of all, because I have offended thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to sin no more. The void and near occasions of sin. Amen. So we come before him, we repent, say, God, I can't do it myself, but you can. Now, what do you need to confess? Most of you have never made a good confession. I'm sorry, but you just haven't. Because you were afraid. You think, well, if I tell Father that, he'll think I'm a pervert. We already know you are. It's just one of those realities. But you've got to make sure, like, every sin you confess, Jesus says, give it to me, and he dies for that sin. Every sin you don't confess, he doesn't die for it. You've got to die for it. So you've got to make sure that you have a good confession. Because if you go to confession and you purposely withhold one sin, are you forgiven of any of your sins? Nope. It's like if you get cancer, the first thing you ask after operation is to get it all. Because if there's one part in there, you're going to die. And same with our sins. So we have to make a good contrition. We have to make a good confession. You don't have to be afraid, gentlemen. I've been hearing confessions for 26 years, soon to be. And I have never yelled at anybody. This is the place where you meet Jesus. And you do realize the whole purpose, the whole reason Jesus was born was you shall name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. The whole reason Jesus Christ died on the cross was to forgive you your sins. You just have to make a good confession and be sorry. So I'm going to help you do that. So we're going to go through the commandments. First commandment, I am the Lord your God. No false gods before me. So is God first in your life? I mean, again, unless I give this talk, no one ever says this. Is God first in your life? What's the answer? No. He's not in any of your lives. Mine either. I want him to be. But if I was to ask you what's the greatest sin, wouldn't it make sense it goes against the greatest commandment? You know, if I was to ask you the great, what's the greatest sin? Murder, rape, abortion. Yeah, all those things you haven't done. It's easy for you to judge everybody else. But Jesus said the greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. I've met John Paul II, Mother Teresa. I've never met anybody who loves God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Never. So that makes us all sinners. Not only sinners, the greatest of them. So who are we to, vote to, to uh, judge anybody else? So gentlemen, you can't even begin to love God unless you have a committed prayer life. You've got to have committed prayer time with the Lord every day. If I was to ask you, did you uh, pray yesterday? Go, oh, no, Father, I'm sorry I was busy. Oh, okay, did you eat yesterday? Well, sure, Father. You love food more than you love God. Did you pray yesterday? Oh, no, Father. Oh, did you read, watch TV yesterday? Well, sure. You love television more than you love God. I don't care what. If you tell me that you love God above all things and you don't pray every day, you're a liar. And gentlemen, some of you have hats on in front of the Blessed Sacrament. I don't know if they do that in Texas, but you take your hat off in front of Almighty God, just to give you a little hint. <clears throat> anyway, and so you'll confess that too. I had the hat on before Jesus. But anyway, so is God first in your life? The second reality is you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Not just anger. That's using God's name as an adjective. Oh, my G-O-D. Did you see how he hit that ball? It's unbelievable. You know what they did to you in the Old Testament just for saying God's holy name? Stoned you to death. Same penalty as adultery. Well, Father, all you know it's a habit. It's a sinful habit. It cries out to Almighty God. So you have to say, I know priests that use God's holy name in vain. I go, shut up. Really? You are forbidden to say God's name except in prayer. So, and if you do, it cries out to Almighty God. Isn't it amazing? God only gave ten commandments, and one whole commandment is don't you dare say my name for no reason. Second commandment, you do realize when I'm done with you, you'll have broken all the commandments, but just a thought. <laughs> Third commandment, keep holy the Sabbath. What kind of sin is it to miss Mass on Sunday, gentlemen? Mortal sin. What happens? You die in mortal sin. You go to hell, not pass, go, not collect $200. How many mortal sins it take to go to hell? One. Father, I don't believe it. Nobody asks you. 
Huh? It's just that simple. Who, you're not the God of the universe. You don't decide what's right and wrong. God does. Just like you're, those of you who fight with me on this, if you're a father, I bet you you have rules in your house. Do your kids get to vote to see if they agree with you? Bet you they don't. So some of the people that are most arrogant against God, well, I don't believe missing Mass is Sunday of Holy Mass. You're the most arrogant when it tells about your kids, you'll be home at 8 o'clock. Well, who the hell are you? If you have the right to tell your children what to do, how much more does the God of the universe have a right to demand of you certain things for your good? And so if you don't go to Mass on Sunday, you say, God, you're not worth my time. He goes, okay, the day you die, of course, gentlemen, God gives you what you love the most, and that won't be him. Because you can't even give him an hour a week because you wanted to go golfing that day. God, golf's more important to me to you, than you. Now, so to commit a mortal sin, though, you need three things. Serious matter, full knowledge, full consent of the will, correct? So you have to know it's wrong. It is uh, got to be wrong, and you got to do it freely. If you do that, you're in mortal sin. You cannot go to com communion again unless you go what? Confession. If you do go to communion, what is that? It's a sacrilege. It's like spitting on God, okay? Fourth commandment. On your father and mother. You can't sit there and say, and not just those kids that are here, like, oh, joy, when you come home, will they see you look at them home? Or do you drive your parents crazy? If your parents are old, do you take care of them? If they die, do you pray for them? Huh? Fifth commandment. You shall not kill. Father, I've never killed anybody. Oh, yeah? How about your anger? You ask anyone that knows me, what's Father Larry's greatest sin? They'll tell you immediately. His temper. Oh, I, I have a bad temper. And again, I've turned many people off to God. Do you use that? I went through two years for agri-management counseling. I'm much better, thank you very much. But the reality is, anger is a sign of weakness. It's not a sign of strength. So do you get angry? Have you helped someone have an abortion? If you have, you, you didn't kill that child, that child still sees the face of God. What you need to do is you gotta confess that, then you gotta ask God if he gave you a boy or girl, you gotta name your son or daughter, and you gotta reach into heaven and ask that son or daughter you killed for forgiveness. And then you'll finally be set free. Sixth commandment, this is where you're all going to be red-faced for the next couple minutes. You shall not commit adultery. Sins of the flesh. Now, all sins of the flesh begin between the ears, not between the legs. Shut up. There was a priest that sat there and said once, I said between that, he said sheets. And I said, Father, you can do it above the sheets too. But anyway, everyone has sexual thoughts or fantasies. I have them every day. They didn't magically go away when I became a priest. So, sexual thoughts and fantasies, there's nothing wrong with them unless you say yes to them, right? You know, again, we're all going to have them. So it's, I used to tell my boys, you can have a bird fly over your head. You just don't want that bird to nest in your hair. Once a priest asked a high school boy, he says, oh, son, have you entertained any sexual thoughts or fantasies? He goes, oh, no, father. They entertain me. <laughs> That's when they become sinful, when you say yes. Some people carry them through with themselves on masturbation. When was the last time you heard a good talk on masturbation? Masturbation, masturbation, masturbation. Now, the problem wrong with masturbation is you take sex, which is supposed to go out of yourself, and you're supposed to die and turns it toward yourself and becomes an act of selfishness. Now, people are petrified to do that. The best way to confess, not to do it, but to confess it, the best way to confess that sin is just say, Father, I was impure with myself. The priest don't know what you mean. Trust me. He's not going to say, how do you do that exactly? Father, you know, just sit there and say it because it's a mortal sin objectively. Now, when you sit there and if you're afraid, to, uh, people are petrified. A priest didn't like the word masturbation once in, a, in the diocese of Scranton. So he says, I don't like that word. So if you did it, just say, Father, I loved my country. Okay? So people would come to confession and bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been one month since my last confession. I love my country five times since my last confession. This went on. It wasn't just a guy thing, a girl thing. And this went on for years. The pastor dies. A new pastor comes along. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been two weeks since my last confession. I love my country every day since my last confession, whatever it is. And after about six months, he's thinking, you know. So he gets up one Sunday and he goes, you know, we have a very patriotic parish here. <laughs> so however you want to confess it, but you got to confess it. So, sex with yourself, outside of marriage, sex, uh, anyway, how far can you go? Oral sex, intercourse is all wrong outside of marriage. How far can you go before marriage? You want to know? Nothing below the neck, gentlemen. Either neck. I talked this to a bunch of boys once and one immediately raised his hand. I go, what? Can I turn her upside down, Father? No, you can't turn her upside down. You can kiss. That's about it. Nothing below the neck. Okay, have you, uh, you know, oral sex, is it allowed in marriage? As long as it ends in intercourse, it can never end in itself. Two things must be open, must be open to love and life. So as St. As, uh, John Paul II says, no, no part of the body is unkissable. 
So you can do it, but it can never end in itself. It has to always end in intercourse. Artificial birth control is a sin, gentlemen. You say you take the power of life out of God's hands and you become God. Okay? You can't do that. You're not God. He is. If you lie, cheated, stolen, gossip, been jealous, got drunk, got high, had sex with someone of the same sex, looked at pornography, all these things. These are all sins you need to confess. Now, gentlemen, I have an easy way to confession. The other priests won't do this, but I'll tell you when I'm back there. I'll tell the questions or tell me. 99% of you are going to go for the questions. You will be out of there in less than 60 seconds, even if it's been 50 years I promise I'll say are you married or single because there's two different sets of questions I'll say do you pray every day have you used God's name in vain have you missed mass dishonored your parents got angry hurt others with your words made fun of others ha help someone have an abortion impure thoughts impure actions with self oral sex with another intercourse with another sex with some of the same sex have you looked at pornography have you lied have you cheated have you stolen have you gossiped have you been jealous have you got drunk have you got high have you been judgmental do you consistently take care of the poor is there anything else Usually it's yes, 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 yes. No, I'd never do that one, Father. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'd like to try that one, Father. Whack! Yes, yes, yes. Is there anything else? Yeah, I don't like cats, and I set one on fire to watch it burn once. You are going to hell, and there's going to be cats down there forever. So, and then I'll say at the end, I'll say, are you sorry? I am sorry. That's your act of contrition. Then I'll sit there, and I'll say, your penance is one our Father. All right? And people say, well, Father, I don't think that's enough. Nobody asks you. If you don't think one Our Father's enough, you deal with Jesus. Because if I give you ten Our Fathers, ten Hail Marys, what are you going to do? Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be name. Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be name. Kind of Our Father art in heaven. If I do ten, I better go another one just in case. Our Father art in heaven, hallowed be name. And I think God in heaven sometimes going, oh, shut up. Just say one and mean it. Now, different priests are going to give you different things. Make sure you thank the priests for hearing your confessions. They are here because they love you and they decide to come here to help you. So make sure you thank them. Go to confession. Some of you haven't been to confession in 30 years. It's time to come home. Don't be afraid. Got it? Get it? I'm a minute over. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless, keep and protect you and your Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go to confession. I'm going to be looking for you.